Thank you so much for coming back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about The Mummy. Blacktastic Media is back once again to talk about another movie with me and this time I wanted him to join me for The Mummy 1932, the classic film, the universal horror monster classic and we recently not too long ago did the uh, remake with, or one of the remakes I should say, with Tom Cruise and I figured why not have Blacktastic check out this classic with me. I haven't watched this movie since I was young. We're going to hear from Blacktastic in just a little bit but if you guys have been watching this channel for a while or at least for the last year last October I actually reviewed the 1931 uh, Dracula and Frankenstein which uh, Boris Karloff who plays the mummy in this film also played Frankenstein's monster in Frankenstein and if you guys saw my reviews for those though there are dated elements and there are really cheesy things and of course you have to go back and watch one of these movies and expect that there's gonna be a lot of silence and that some of the music is gonna cut out at times some of the dialogue and the line delivery is gonna be hilarious because it was just a different time for cinema and I've always loved classic black and white films there's so much about this era and the eras that would come after about film that I just really loved. And uh, so going back and watching this film, what did I think about it? I think this one, out of the ones I've seen it recently, was kind of a bit of a disappointment. And I'm actually really happy that Blacktastic has a little bit of a different opinion. Now, I have some big positives about this movie that I do thoroughly enjoy as a classic horror fan and as a big fan of The Mummy, Boris Karloff, and Universal Classic Monsters. But yeah, going back and watching this, I just found this one to be okay. When I watched Dracula and Frankenstein, I think what makes those films really exciting is that Frankenstein's monster and Dracula are very entertaining characters. The performances are a little bit over the top, but they fit the film and it feels like these actors were bringing something to the table that kind of made these characters memorable and exciting to watch. And watching this one, I just felt that the mummy, outside of the iconic imagery, felt a little flat for me as far as a character. And like I mentioned, Boris Karloff, who plays the mummy in this film, also played Frankenstein's monster in the film that you know came out literally a year prior. And I think that what he was able to do with that character, playing this character that you know lacks knowledge, is this ignorant character that is confused by things, and a lot of what he does is based on confusion. A lot of the, the scary things he does, like when he throws a little girl into the lake because he thinks she can float like the flowers, you know, he did that out of confusion, and when he notices that she's drowning, he's, like, afraid, you know? And I, I love what Boris Karloff brought to the character as far as giving us this very almost childlike monster that's doing things without knowing, is afraid, and is doing things just based off of emotion in the moment without really knowing how to handle things. And it made Frankenstein's monster a very memorable character. And then when you look at something like Dracula, I mean, everything that we do as far as Dracula today is based on what Bela Lugosi did in that film. His performance, the, the kind of cockiness, the way that he played the character, the voice, everything about it. Everything that we know about Dracula and that we've seen redone in films today is almost always, especially when it's spoofed or done in animated stuff, is almost always calling back to Bela Lugosi's version of Dracula. It just is what it is. And going back and watching this one, I just found it to be okay, like I mentioned. I feel like Boris Karloff was directed to play a fairly, very just plain-faced character. Now, some of the biggest positives I can give this movie are the makeup, the, the practical effects, and all that jazz for the time. Of course, you're going to watch a movie like this and expect that some of the line delivery, some of the dialogue, some of the acting is going to be a little bit overdone. And some of the elements, as far as the very obvious sets that they built that are supposed to be, you know, in Egypt and all that jazz, are going to look a little cheesy for the time. This movie did come out in 1932. So, you guys know I'm a fairly positive reviewer, so I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to cut it some slack a little bit there. But for the most part, I just found that the story wasn't nearly as exciting for me going back and watching it. And I just felt that it was an okay way watch it wasn't as good as I remembered and it made me really just kind of solidify my opinion on the fact that I think that the first Brendan Fraser film uh, the, the remake of the reboot series the trilogy that they did with Brendan Fraser I think that's my favorite mummy movie after watching this one now without a doubt like I mentioned Boris Karloff is a fantastic actor and I think that he does a good job in this movie he's got the voice he's got the stature he's got the look he's creepy he's eerie that iconic shot of him inside the makeup as the mummy and even what 
you know, his inside the makeup for Frankenstein's monster is iconic. If you go anywhere today, as far as like Universal Studios or anything that has to bring those characters up, you still see the iconic imagery and the shots of these original people who were casted as these characters in the original films. And I think without a doubt, it just goes to show that the imagery of this film, Boris Karloff's face and him in this makeup has not died out at all. Here in Orlando at Universal Studios, there's a cafe that they have in Universal Studios called um, like the Monster Cafe, the Universal Monster Cafe. And they have like statues of the monsters and images. They have TV screens playing all the classic uh, monster movies and clips from them. And all the classic monsters and the actual actors who played them, their faces are what's all over that cafe. So again, it just goes to show that this era of horror and these characters are still iconic and beloved. And it just goes to show that Boris Karloff was an iconic horror figure of the time. It just, it, you can't deny it. But I found his version of the mummy rewatching it today to be a little lackluster as a character. He was missing something for me. He felt like a Frankenstein without the elements that make Frankenstein endearing and kind of engaging, you know? He felt very plain face, like there wasn't really much to his character. And it was really more his glare and his look overall that made him a creepy character now of course when you go back and watch a movie like this you can't expect it to be scary today at least not in the same way that it was for audiences in the early 30s we have come a long way in horror so without a doubt I think the set design some of the costume design and the performances specifically from people like Boris Karloff are definitely some of the biggest highlights that this movie has to offer I think that a lot of the performances were fun to watch but I just found that the story was it just lacking a little something. By the end of it, I wasn't as entertained as I was hoping to be. Now, before I continue giving you guys my thoughts on this movie, let's go ahead and hear what my buddy Black Tastic had to say about this. Yes, it's getting close to the Halloween season. October is here and I love it, love it, love it. This is one of my favorite times of year. Ghosts, ghouls, and goblins will haunt your city in your house, in your bedroom. Beware of what's under the bed. <laughs> I'm just having fun. My man, Anthony A. Perez, gave me a homework assignment. Dude, let's review the classic mummy movie, Karloff, from 1932. I'm like, yo, I'm with it. I love classic movies. I love classic horror movies. They don't make them the way they used to, and I'm just a fan of that type of horror. Not a whole lot of blood, not a whole lot of gore, just great stories and mystery and filmmaking the mummy um, is a tragic love story and that's what's so beautiful about this movie you know I love eccentric offbeat love stories and this is exactly what this is Karloff the year before was the Frankenstein then they did Dracula the dude was a mega superstar when the mummy came out tall in stature handsome man and a great actor and most importantly a great voice later on he would voice the Grinch by Dr. Seuss um let me tell you man I've never seen this movie in its entirety when I was a child adult or teenager so this was great to see after all this time and like I said it's a tragic love story the mummy back in the Egyptian days did something that was unholy and he was punished uh, the scrolls he tried to steal those and try to live forever they wrapped his ass up in bandages buried him alive along with the material that he tried to take and you gotta understand the traditional mummy that we know runs around with bandages going Ooh! That's not this mummy. Never was this mummy. Ever was like that. Later on it changed. I think they did five movies total. But the mummy changed 
appearances and storylines over the years but this is the first true mummy movie and let me tell you man the black and white the classic cars the music the women were beautiful back then uh the cinematography was just mm, the aesthetic of the, the real live buildings i mean the museum in this movie the ballroom everything the characters are absolutely eccentric in this movie acting was basically if you didn't overact you didn't act that's how it was in hollywood in the 1930s years later they discover this tomb they bring it to the museum they're examining it and trying to open it up and trying to look at the skulls, trying to see what is going on. What do these scrolls have to interpret what's going on? When that mummy came alive, <laughs> he opened up his eyes and grabbed that scroll. Man, the guy that was there at the museum let out a scream of terror. Then he started laughing in complete hysteria and insanity. One of my favorite parts of the movie because this man was acting every bit of his ass off. The female protagonist in this movie, the lineage with her related to the mummies, love interest from way back in the Egyptian days. Great story. She was an incredible actress. Uh, I think she did about eight films her whole career, but she was strikingly beautiful. And in real life, she believed and the supernatural so she really got into the role when this movie came out to be and the traditional mummy this guy he had it like a little small room in palace he had this pool where he can see actual events that's happening in real time and this is like 11 years later he came back reincarnated as a, as a man his face somewhat mummified but not really bad and he was looking for his love and he found her and he went through everything he could, speaking in native tongues, to put her under the spell to come to him so they can be reunited together forever. And essentially, he had to kill her to get the old one to come back. It's a, it's a really, really creepy love story. But man, this man can kill you with his bare hands in that ring looking through a, this pool he had of events. And man, when these people were clutching their heart from heart attacks in their throat from being choked. This man would literally choke the life out of you. It was somewhat funny, but it was good as entertaining. They don't make movies like this, man. And as a director, this is my love of cinema era right here. I try to base my movies in the same style. Very slow pace, sometimes to the point where it seems a little monotonous, but that's what I like about old school Hollywood. The Mummy. This is perfect for the Halloween time. Uh, it still dates well. I love the music. I love to say I love the overacting. And this really is cinema at its best. And again, I never seen this whole movie before. And I learned a whole lot. Now, there was a curse that came with this tomb. But after the mummy came alive, it really didn't go into detail about the curse, so you really don't know what happens. But this movie is entertaining from beginning to end. It's beautiful to watch, and it sets the mood for the Halloween season. Karloff the Mummy. Please, do yourself a favor and check this movie out. In the meantime, I'm going to give the floor to my man, Anthony Perez. This man is a stellar storyteller when it comes to horror films and the background of these movies love this dude's passion when it comes to horror movies so check what out he has to say but in the meantime be sure to like share subscribe to my man's page and leave a comment down low and happy halloween <laughs>
I found myself still really enjoying it because I love this era of Hollywood and I love seeing where film has gone since this film, you know, and to see what the mummy films have, you know, done that played off of this film. I think that without a doubt, I would never not recommend this to somebody who's a film fan or a horror fan. I think if you're a fan of the mummy films or just the whole universal horror monsters in general, even if it's just on an imagery level, I think that you should definitely check this movie out and, you know, get your own opinion without a shadow of a doubt because you could be somebody like me or you could be somebody like Blacktastic who just had a lot of fun with it even though you know it's not the best but i love to hear what you have to say again thank you again for being in this video and uh thank you for the kind words my friend and i look forward to our next review <laughs> so let's get into a couple other things that i think are some of the biggest negatives of this movie there is one guy in this film that is black facing it uh which was yeah one of the many things that i feel that this film did that kind of dated it. Of course, you know, in the previous films that Universal had done of, the, of these monster films, you have Dracula and, and Frankenstein where a lot of the cast was either English or they were American. And so you were able to have these actors playing characters that they should be playing. But it was a different time in Hollywood. It was a different time for casting in movies. And this film takes place primarily in Egypt. Obviously, they didn't film on location. They were filming on, you know, on a set. But when you watch this movie, there's quite a few moments that are rather questionable compared to some things that we'd see in movies today. One of them being this guy who's very clearly a white guy in blackface and supposed to be an Egyptian. It does not work. It's very clear when you watch it today that that is a white man in blackface. So that was one thing that was very stand out to me. You know what I mean? Like it didn't ruin the film for me because the character is very small, but it was kind of like, oh man, like yeah, one of those old timey old Hollywood things that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. There was also some moments where you have these very clearly white guys that are playing these Egyptian characters and they'd be talking and you know when somebody doesn't have English as their first language they kind of will speak in a way where it's kind of like a broken down sentence so they kind of just use the necessary words for you to be able to understand it but they didn't actually put together like a sentence that was you know properly put together you know what I mean and so you have these white actors putting on these really bad Egyptian accents that are also kind of like putting together these sentences that kind of come off very stereotypical and so stuff like that definitely stood out in this movie when I watched it but it didn't ruin the film for me but it's something I feel I should at least mention watching it through modern eyes today and yeah you know I think for me what this film just lacked was a sense of depth uh, the other performances in this film were solid for the time you know but it's all cheesy it's all over the top I feel like things were just kind of rushed you know and these films definitely have that element sometimes they would skip over things and you would kind of learn about what just happened or what has happened via like some quick dialogue or they would kind of show you like in this in the case of this film they literally show you a newspaper reel at one point to show you that you know there's been a little bit of a time skip and i think that just for me the story just felt a little bit jumbled i didn't really care for any of the characters i just was entertained by boris karloff as the mummy but i think what disappointed me going back and rewatching it is i forgot that boris karloff is not in that mummy makeup for very long in the film most of the time he just looks like a normal human he's a little bit off and he's a little bit you know awkward in these moments but he doesn't look like the monster that is so iconic that you see on all of the imagery for this film. So without a doubt, I think that there's things to praise about this film. But I got to be honest, you know, this film just didn't hold up the same way for me that something like Dracula or Frankenstein did. I am excited to continue going through these universal horror monster movies and see which ones stand out for me or as far as a positive or stand out in a negative way. I think watching this, it was very clear to me that I think the remake with Brendan Fraser is a better movie. And that's just my opinion. Do you disagree? I would love to hear why down below in the comments. You know, again, I think without a doubt, the one thing I do want to say is that if you are a film fan, if you're a fan of horror, if you're a fan of The Mummy and you've never seen this movie, I do recommend checking it out. I would never turn anybody away from watching one of these classic movies. I am super happy to have it in my movie collection. I will never get rid of it because this is just a huge part of cinematic history. This is a huge part of horror cinema. These universal horror monsters hold a very special place in my heart. And even though this film didn't hold up for me as much as I may have remembered, I think that there are a lot of things about the set design and the, 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 you know, the makeup and the costumes and the over the top acting and some of the, the camera work and the music that does hold up and kind of adds to this charm of this era. I just felt that by the end of the film, it just kind of ended and I just kind of looked over at my girlfriend and we were just kind of like, Okay, that was that, you know, there wasn't really much more to talk about. We kind of were just like, oh, the movie's over, let's go to bed. And we really didn't have 
much to really grip onto as far as a story or even an entertainment value that I think that Dracula and Frankenstein that came out a year prior, those films had it and this one just kind of lacked it a little bit for me. So yeah guys, what do you guys think about 1932's The Mummy starring Boris Karloff? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Do you prefer him as The Mummy or do you prefer him as uh, Frankenstein's monster. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Comment your thoughts down below. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you guys have not already done so. As usual, you can find the link to Blacktastic Media down below in the description box. Go give them some love. Let them know I sent you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.